Finally, the government have made an announcement about the 2021 exams and the announcement told us absolutely nothing because the things that they announced had been leaked in the press weeks ago, so we already knew them. And the specific details, the bits that we would actually need to move forward, nobody knows yet because the exam boards probably didn't find out much before we did and they haven't sorted it out and are basically telling everyone to wait until the new year before they will tell us anything but from the report I can tell you one thing that is very very clear firstly that the government has made it clear that there are going to be exams maybe not everyone's sitting them but there are going to be exams and secondly once the exam boards decide make a decision you will have another set of mocks so even if you have already done your mocks once the government's make a decision um, once the exam boards make a decision about what the government's told them to do your schools will respond to that by giving you another set of mocks but what have the government actually announced effectively nothing um, they have said that the grading will be more generous in 2021 so that the grades will be in line with the 2020 results. However, they have not told us what that actually means. Does it mean the grade boundaries are going to be shifted up? Does it mean that some schools where they've had a high percentage of um, time outside of school are going to be standardised up a little bit whereas schools which are going to schools where they've had lots of time in school and haven't had missed up disruption are they going to be not standardised the there is no information in this as to what this actually means sorry I haven't managed to get to the hairdress and my fringe is really annoying me anyway there is no details in what this actually means. So more generous grading sounds great, but until we know the actual details of it, we can't make any kind of assessment on that at all. The government have also said they're going to be telling you what topics are going to be on the exam. So kind of like in geography where there's a pre-release and you get to study it. Now, as I mentioned a few videos ago, this will work really well for some subjects. So for kind of like um, English, you might know that the question is going to be on Act 2, Scene 5 or Act 2. So you can ignore all of the other bits of the play or the book or you might know that it's going to be on Daisy. Um, so that sort of thing they might tell you. And for English it'll work really well because they can make it that broad yet that specific. For something like maths, I can see it not working quite so well for a couple of reasons. Two, the there is no reduction in the amount of maths that is being studied this year. So you still have to do the whole thing. And generally over the course of three papers, they manage to cover the whole spec. So they might tell you that question one is on circles and question two is on graphs, but generally it's going to cover everything anyway. So telling you what order the questions are going to be in might actually just be a bit of distraction because generally everything comes up. And it's not going to be helpful if they're not specific. So for example, science forces is a massive, massive topic. So if they tell us question one is going to be on forces, well, great, but that's like a quarter of the course, not a quarter of the course, but it's a big, big chunk of the course. So unless they're really specific, then it may or may not actually be helpful for different subjects. And this is something that the exam boards are going to have to discuss themselves, how specific, how general, how broad they're going to be, because the government as far as I'm aware, hasn't given them any actual direction on this. And the exam boards are saying that in the new year, they will decide. And I'm sure after they've decided, your teachers will turn around and give you another set of mocks based on what the exam boards have said. But until the exam boards make a decision, we don't really know anything. The government have also said that you'll be given formula sheets, like this one. If anyone at AQA would like me to provide you with formula sheets, I've got a really pretty one. Um, formula sheets to help reduce the amount of stuff that you actually have to learn. This is a brilliant idea because it is really helpful, it is really useful. Except, at the moment, they haven't told us which subjects you're going to be getting formula sheets for. So the obvious assumption would be you'd get formula sheets for maths and physics. But we don't actually know that for certain yet. They might 
just decided to go with maths and you still had to learn all of the equations for physics. Or they might just say to give you an equation sheet for history which isn't actually very useful at all. Um, so until we actually know which objects you're getting equation sheets for, it's another non-announcement from the government. Yay, so exciting. They have also said there will be an additional exam series in like July. Now this, to be fair to them, is quite a good idea. The exam boards always produce a backup set of papers just in case um, a set of papers get leaked or go missing. Like a few years ago, a whole lorry load of French papers went missing. Um, and in that case, the backup paper can be distributed and the backup paper used. So exam boards have backup papers ready because exam papers take about 18 months to write. So they're saying when the exams are gonna be in June, there'll be a backup exam series in July. So say for maths that you're able to sit two out of the three papers, but you can't sit paper three, you get the chance to sit paper three in the July exam series. So there is a second chance to sit the exam series. And this is actually a really good idea. The government are making a new expert group to look at variations amongst the country, which to be fair, they could have done a long time ago. So it's a good idea, but it's probably a little bit too little, a little bit too late. Because who is gonna be on this group? What powers are they gonna have? What data are they gonna be looking at? How much um, influence are schools and teachers gonna have into this group? Um, so until we know more about this group, I'm kind of like, it kind of seems like a good idea, but you could have done this ages ago. Now the part of the reason for this group being set up is to look at the differences between some schools in like Cornwall who are in like tier one or medium restrictions or whatever it's actually called at the moment and are open the whole time for year 11s and some of the schools in the northeast who have been in high um, very high restrictions for months now and I know one of my friend's schools, the year 11s have only been in for two weeks. So there's a big, big difference there and that's the sort of thing that this group is going to be looking at, how they can balance out the disparities between these and this may come into the, the more generous grading so maybe some schools or some areas will get more generous grading and other schools areas won't get more generous grading. The other thing that the um, government have said that not only will you get two chances to sit the exam, um, so sit the exam in June, sit the exam in July, if you miss a paper, so you might have like a couple of papers sat in June and another paper sat in July, if you're isolating or your positive test codes or bubble pops or anything like that. And the expectation is that most students will be able to sit some exams at one of these two opportunities. However, if you can only sit, say, two out of three exams in the first and you can't sit the exam, the, the, the third exam in the second exam period, they will give you a grade based on those two papers. So based on the papers that you are actually able to sit. So that's happening. And then... For the people that are not able to sit any of the papers in either of the exam slots, then they're talking about the similar system we had last year with centre assessed grades, which have been um, vigorously checked, which means nothing, because we know what the vigorous checking did last year, it moved everything up and down. So that is the non-announcement that the government has made, because all of the interesting bits were leaked ages ago, um, and then all of the details that would have filled in the interesting bits haven't actually been decided by the exam boards yet. So, happy nothing announcements. Oh, the joy. Um, anyway guys, it's nearly Christmas. Um, it's raining here, it's cold, it's dark, but it's a bit sparkly. I even went and got like super sparkly nails, super sparkly nails. I know. First time, second, I was like, anyway, I've now literally just sent it into waffling. So, um, good luck, guys. This will not last forever. This will be over at some point, and we will be allowed to go out and see each other again. Um, I will be here with you literally every single second of the way. Ouch!
This is why in some videos I have had explained scratches.